Hey everyone, I thought it would be best if uh, if I did a, a DBC demo of sorts. So um, I know that not everyone has uh, software tools that can easily do it. So I did a quick search and I found a, a freeware for DBC editing. Um, it's it's made by Vector and they make, they make good hardware. I played also with SavvyCan, uh, which is it's a possibility, but it's, it doesn't work on the 64-bit operating system. Long story short, we're going to do this one with Vector. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. OK. So here we go. Um, here is the, um, the website. Essentially, you just go to Vector. Um, products. So I just did a Google search real, real quick. I'll even show you my search terms. DBC viewer free and then vector can DB++. So that's where we're going. And essentially just scroll all the way to the bottom and downloads. Here we go. Add on freeware DB, can DB++ editor. Click on that. It's got a free download for you. Um, once that's all taken care of, it's basically all done. So now what we'll do is I have uh, I had to make a shortcut here, but uh, you just simply open it up. And I'm going to import a DVC file. Now this is uh, uh, publicly available. So this is for the AEM Infinity ECU. So I don't I don't mind sharing it. Uh, but we're just going to click open here. Uh, I did have to make this selection to DVC files. Uh, when I first did it, it was set to their native uh, can D, DB++ uh, file type. So we'll just do a database file and double click it and it's open. Okay, so you have to forgive me. I haven't, I haven't played much with this, but uh, essentially click on the AEM under the network nodes. And here you have all of the available channels in this column. And then you have the messages. Um, I'm not really going to use anything with this. I'm sure there's some meaningful information, but really what we're looking for is the start bit the length, the byte order, the value type, and factors, offsets, and units. This is what we're looking for right here. So uh, we'll go through this really quickly. Um, so basically, we know the name of our channel, AFR1. Actually, we're just going to do engine speed. I think that'll be a little bit easier. So we have engine speed right here. We know that the start bit is on 8. Um, the length is on 16. And the byte order, order is Motorola. And we have uh, an unsigned integer. The factor, this is our gain, is 0 0.39063, and we have an offset of zero. So what we'll, and we know the unit, the unit's RPM. So we'll uh, open up our Race Studio 3 software here. And let's see if I can do both of these at the same time for you. Okay, perfect. So uh, we go into the CAM protocol section, and we're gonna create a new CAM protocol. And for this, we will add a manufacturer. A, oh no, I already have AEM. Uh, let's see, AEM. And we'll do infinity test. Um, the bus speed on this one is one megabit per second. One thing that you'll know that you'll you need to know is that a DBC file uh, rarely ever contains a bus speed. Uh, the only time I've had it contain a bus speed is when it's actually in the um, in the notes of the database file, but I don't know how to look up the notes in this. Uh, so uh, we're going to lean on my knowledge here, and we're going to know that it's one megabit per second. We want it on the ECU stream or the primary CAN bus. If I wanted it on CAN2 or secondary CAN bus, I'd choose this other CAN device right here. Um, so we just hit OK. It opens up uh, a new payload stream. So I can add a new CAN stream. And we get to define the CAN ID. Let's see here. Oh, that is one thing it doesn't actually show. Message. Here it is. OK, so um, here's the definition start bit. Um, we click on message and the ID. This ID is the CAN ID. So we'll just go ahead and enter that in here. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, extended format. So we'll, it's 29 bit. So we'll do 1F, uh, 0A, 0, 0, 0. OK. And 
it is not in Intel format, it's in Motorola format. So there's some common uh, uh, nomenclature here that that you can, it, it doesn't take a much to, to get used to it, but Motorola is big Indian and Intel is little Indian, but we, we put both in there. Um, you can call it high to low, low to high, uh, but we're gonna be using big Indian for this. So we hit select. Now we know that our start bit is eight. Um, so we implement a start bit of eight. As you can see, the data is transmitting in this direction here in big Indian format or Motorola format. So the start bit is on eight because it has to travel 16 bits of information uh, back to the uh, least significant digit. Uh, so we have, we have our allocation here. So what you can see is that it is start bit eight and the length is 16 bits. Here you can see that our start bit is eight and the number of bits is 16 or the, the length of the message. We're just gonna put in engine RPM uh, and short name RPM. We set a function here as engine RPM and the maximum frequency. Let's see if this gives us the, the frequency maximum. Oh, look, message ID is right there. Let's see. No, minimum, maximum offset. Well, is not included. So for now, we'll use 10 times a second. Um, and here, we're just going to take the factor that we have right here. I wonder if I could even copy this out of there. Uh, anyways. Um, We'll just enter that into our gain. Factor, gain are interchangeable. So we'll do 0 0.39063. And we have no offset. Now we're going to check our, our signed data type. And we're set to unsigned. So most of these are unsigned. But you see here this coolant temperature, that's signed data. Um, so that needs to be calibrated or uh, configured correctly. Uh, but after that, unit of conversion set, we now have engine RPM. And, and that's it. The, all the data is in a DBC file. You can even open it up in Notepad, um, but Notepad won't provide you with hexadecimal information for the CAN ID. Here, this 1F0AA, uh, it will actually give you um, a decimal version of it. So you have to have your calculator out. And you just change this to programmer and you enter in the hex value. Um, uh, it will give you a decimal value, but you would just enter that in, in the decimal section of 1F. 0A000. Zero zero zero. Uh, so that's the decimal equivalent. That's what it'll look like in Notepad. You just type it into here and it gives you the hex value for it. And that's really the only, the only hiccup with using Notepad. Uh, but all the information is in Notepad as it's just the text file. Um, so if you want, we can do uh, um, the coolant temperature as well. So we'll do uh, coolant temp here. It's the signed data. So what we need to find is the ID, uh, which is actually the same. So that makes it easy on us. And then we go to the start bit. Um, start bit's 56, length of eight. So we come over here and you can see how these are all numbered. It is the last byte in the, in the payload definition. So we know it's only eight bits in length. So one byte message. And we do the same thing. Um, temp and we'll call it CCT and here we're just going to set this as a temperature and we're going to define the temperature as water temperature this is helpful with smarty cam tables and um, uh, calling functions when I want to uh, race studio 3 will use this a, a lot more uh, but for right now it's really just the smarty cam so we're looking at the unit here um, how do we we assign a, a metric to it. So this is temperature C. So we can do our unit of conversion as C. And now we're going to look at the, uh, the gain is one, the offset is zero, and the minimum maximum we don't need to worry about because it is signed data. So signed data, these are, will already be implemented uh, into it. it. It's already configuring it. And everything looks good, 10 times a second. So we'll hit okay. And now we have RPM, engine coolant temp from a DBC file. Uh, I hope it, I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is, like I said, this is just the free um, software that I grabbed uh, just to show um, 
that there, there's freeware out there. And if you have a DBC file, you can open it up and look at it, get the message ID, the start bit, the length, the byte order, the factor and offset. And that's really all that you need to create an XC1 file. The, the only hiccups that I ever have doing this is clerical errors. Um, it's a lot of transposing numbers to numbers and, and it's easy to make a mistake. Uh, they're also easily caught. So you just go and validate your work using the live measures function in Race Studio 3 and, and all is right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, if you have any other questions, just let me know. I am always happy to help.